Graham Carlson. Hey, Scott. How are I'm you? so excited to be here. I can tell. Uh, Your hands are so animated. My hands are very animated. Yeah, Let me show wow. You they went the away and they came were... back. <laughs> they're out, they're in. It's, uh, in. it's incredible. So, Scott recently. I'm horrified. Picked... And horrifying. Get it? Horrifying? Yeah. Right there. Um, so, recently I picked up a collection of the Arkham Horror card game by Fantasy Flight Games. Mm hmm. And Sequel to uh, Arkham Knight, the fourth game in the series. Yes, right? that's exactly right. It takes more of a survival horror bend than like the open world kind of thing. Yes, uh -huh. uh, very similar. It's it's almost like a Batman game mm -hmm. if Batman was oh. a chef. Oh, it is not. Sorry, I thought I thought this was a Batman Arkham, right? Uh, right. So it, did they lose the Batman license? They lost the Batman license, but kept oh, the Arkham. Oh man, license. that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah. Weird how that, that works sucks. out. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I thought that you might like this game, and so I said, hey, Scott, we should play this, and I'll teach you how to play. We should play this game. Yeah. Graham, can you teach me how to play? I would love to teach you how to play. Great. I, well, you taught me already. You taught me how to play. Great. Now you know. And I know how to play, so, uh, well, ta-da! All right, we have a variety <laughs> of locations in front of you. Uh, before we go any further, Scott, yeah. we actually Yeah, because we, start, we started playing already. We started, we started playing... Already, we played through the first round of the game. Yeah, so the the first the, is it the, are do, are there like uh, an order to the scenarios in this game? Yes. Because you said this is like a beginner scenario, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Arkham Horror is played uh, with scenarios, and uh, when you uh, each scenario links to the next one in a campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, so the scenario that we're playing right now is the first scenario of a three-scenario campaign that comes with the core set. That campaign is called Knight of the Zealot. Yeah, Knight of the Zealot. There it is. Ta-da! Ta-da! See, it's got words here. These are the words we were saying. Right. This is the game. But there are more words, right? There's more words. If you open it up, there's more words on the there's inside. There's a bunch. Right? So. Probably, what, do you think, like 50 or 60 words? Oh, at least. I mean, I'm Maybe no clippy. More. I can't just okay. count words. But okay. They're hard to count. Do you count, count. do you count each letter as a different word? Sometimes you don't Is know. It, you, it's no what, idea. What do hyphens mean? I don't yeah, know. who invented that? Yeah, idiot. Um, so, uh, this is the first scenario. Because it's the very first scenario, it's mm -hmm. a little bit tutorial-esque. Walks you through all the actions. It does. It starts very simple, and it starts at one location. We're one round in, and we've opened up some Number more four because we started at the study actually uh thank you for saying that because i explored the clues in the study right and advanced the story so i actually need to get rid of these clue tokens you do you do i've got to go in there um and uh before we go any further we need to uh draw our opening hands and then do them all again and now then we'll be at turn two and i'll be at turn two okay so, well while we're doing that why don't you uh why don't you give a little explanation of like this game just in general yeah absolutely uh opening hand is five cards Five cards. And you also start with five resources, which act as money. So be okay. sure to grab those from the book. Got five resources, five cards. That's right. All right. Um, so uh, we are playing as a pair of uh, 1920s supernatural investigators. And there's been something weird going on in Massachusetts. The Missouri? town of Arkham, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I thought you said Missouri before. No. This okay. is Massachusetts. I thought we were some like Midwestern boys. We are not. We are East Coast Ladies. Okay, I was, I was so wrong. <laughs> you were a little bit wrong. Uh, so I am playing the role of Zoe Samaris, the chef, and you are playing as... Ursula Downs. Ursula, I've recovered quite a bit from my starring role in The Little Mermaid. Yes. Uh, I have cleaned up. I've turned good. You've turned good. And I'm not a uh, tentacle lady anymore. No, but I'm, if you I look kind of like an Indiana Jones looking fella. You're, you're a lady Indiana Jones, is what it is. And if you miss the tentacles from your past life, don't worry. Am I in the be, right spot? There will be many tentacles to oh, come. Oh, good. Lovely. That uh, doesn't sound good. That sounds bad <laughs> in, so, in many ways. Uh, Ursula, Ursula does not miss the tentacles. That's right. Uh, but she's going to be haunted by them. In Massachusetts. In, in Massachusetts, where haunting tentacles live. Haunting in Massachusetts. Uh, Arkham is based off of uh, the lore and mythos of H.P. Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. Hewlett Packard Lovecraft. Hewlett Packard Lovecraft. He made uh -huh. printers and then later. Cthulhu. And then also this Cthulhu mythos. Uh -huh. uh, so in this game, we are cooperatively looking for clues represented by these tokens here. Uh, to advance the act, uh, which is this deck of cards. And if we make it all the way through the act deck, we win our scenario. 
And the way you described it to me was these are the good cards and these are the bad cards. That's right. So the acts are the good ones. The agendas are the bad ones. And at the end of every round, or at the start of every round, I should say, we're going to add a doom token we've already done. We've already put to some, the agendas. Put some, once they put hit the, the threshold, we flip over this agenda and advance it. Uh, so just story, advancing, it's just going to the next one, right? Just going to the next one. Okay. And uh, what was I just going to say about it? Um, advancing these, the story. Yeah, when you advance these cards, often story events will trigger. New cards get added, bad guys come out of the woodwork, mm -hmm. all kinds of exciting mm -hmm. things. Um, so right now, our current objective is to collect six clues. This card says three and then has a little player head face, man. And that means uh, multiply by the number of players. We have two players. It's two, so it's doubled. So we're Which looking for six, six clues. clues between the two of us. Yep. Um, wait, there's a little. There's a bit of text here, Grim. You want to read that out? You got a good. You have a good reading voice. I have a, I have a good. Reading I can tell voice. from what you've said to me before that you know a lot about words. I know a lot about words, not counting them. But reading. But them. reading them. Mm -hmm. I'm very good at. So why don't you read that here? Uh, so previously we were locked in a study, and as we discovered clues around the room, we found that the door to the study had disappeared from the wall and was in fact underneath a rug. That's some technical business that I've ever heard uh, of. I know, right? So we opened up the door and dropped down into a basement that isn't normally in this house. Hmm. The floor is hmm. dirt, the wall is covered with mud. Hmm. Um, we have fallen down into the hallway. And right Sorry, now- Sorry, you said a basement before? It is a hallway basement, Scott. So Hallways no can exist in basements. That's, I don't know. Maybe. It's weird because this is the hallway that was outside your parlor, but now you've dropped down into the same hallway that was outside oh, your parlor. A bit of, um, what is that, non-Euclidean non geometry? That's right. It's oh my like goodness. an entropy. That is That's a, what's going on right now. That is a classic tentacle sign. Uh, so right now we're on Act 2 of our scenario, which is called The Barrier. The Empire? Oh, okay. Uh, a glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or the attic that could help. Which I'm seeing, I just I didn't really look at this art before, but it looks uh, like it's got, I'm gonna pop in here for a second. And, you see, I got a bunch of it's like fire, like in here. Uh, Is it, that fire? It, it's supposed to be like or growth, heat? like okay. dirt, dirt and growth and things. Okay. Um, and so what, what's cool is that the, the art and the flavor really helps to tell whatever the story is that you're doing, right? So like uh, when it's locked, it tells you uh, what like the hallway looks like. It says, yeah. a moment of panic and disorientation strikes you as you fall into the hallway. Give me another shot of this one here. Okay, so it's got its flavor text. So, that's, so before, this was face down like this. So we had, right. we had a little information about this room. Right. Uh, then we traveled to the room flip the card over. It's got some stuff, right? Right. It's got like numbers. Uh, it tells us how the, the walls are splattered with mud and all this Yuck. Kind of stuff. Ugh. Yuck, right? Muddy walls. Mud. Who, wants, who likes mud? No. Yeah. Mud. Only kids do. Mud wasps, probably. I had a mud wasp in the apartment recently. Really? Yeah. That sounds terrible. It, they, you know mud wasps aren't, but they're solitary. They're solitary creatures. They're kind of cool. So right now, <laughs> maybe you came from, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you said maybe, maybe the you said mud and it kind of brought up a night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wasps and things. Yeah. All right. So our objective, according to the Barrier Act, says when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend six clues to advance. Okay. Okay. So our objective is to find some clues. And which we've we were talking about before. Ursula here is very good at finding clues. That's right. And your lady Zoe over there. Um, She's good at shooting zombies. She is a good kind of quirky leading actress. Yes. Uh, not good at finding clues that right. we've discovered. Right. Uh, so Ursula, queen of the underworld, <laughs> will be finding clues. That is not. This is such a weird something. crossover game. It's like a Batman, Left for Dead, oh Little Mermaid crossover <laughs> event. <laughs> sure. Sure, a little bit. I had no idea that that's what this game was, but I'm excited. I'm excited. You're, you're excited now, right? Great. So we're moving in then to round two. Um, right. Um, do, uh, I went first in our previous round. Does that break up from round to round? We choose the order that we want to go. Okay, because it's, right, it's cooperative. So it we just decide, that's right. you know, Ursula's going to hang out for a minute. Zoe, you can go do your stuff. Right. If we wanted. Uh, cool. Um, so technically, 
to to accurately set up our board state a little bit more because we started recording before we were totally done. Uh, yes, yes um, we did. I got three actions on my turn, which would be to play a knife, a survival knife, and then spend my other two actions gaining two resources. So the survival knife would take one action, cost me two, and then my remaining two actions will be to each take one of those. Okay. Then at the end of the round, we would each get a card and a resource. So your three actions were to search for all the clues and turn them. Yeah, so uh, I mean just... So my first action was to uh, investigate yep. some clues. Yep. And then I found some clues and said, I feel like there's more here to be found. Right. You're so I looking. looked a little hard. Actually, I deduced. Deduced with the deduction card. The deduction card, I deduced that there were more clues than I thought there were. Right. There were two and not one. Right. I said, I bet there, I can see a clue. Hold on one second. I feel like there's another clue. There are two clues. <gasps> what? And then I realized there was actually a third clue. Right. And so, so, so then you just picked up all the clues. I picked up all the clues, and then you pull out a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm ready. I, I'm a chef, right? Okay, you're a chef. It makes sense that I would carry a that, survival knife on. I was going to say, that is like a hunting knife, though. Mm. That's, not, that's not like a chef's knife. Okay, well, you're not wrong. Are you so, like a wilderness chef? You can like steal like skin animals and cook them in the in a survival situation. Hey man, we heard that there were weird things going on in Massachusetts. I we was did. just being prepared. I thought I thought it was Missouri. So uh, well, you know, I was that's, prepared that's for problem. a very different type of Some environment. Some kind of explorer you are. You never know what state you're in. Yeah, Whew. Ursula Downs. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula's having a rough time. Okay. Uh, so at the end of the first round, you uh, then drew an extra card. So uh, I, I need six cards now. Well, you played one. Right. right? So you had five. Yep. You went down to four. Yep. And then you drew another. Then I got, all oh, right, okay. So you're back in five. We're good. I got and it. And you solid. spent no resources, so you should nope. be at six. I should be at six bucks. That's right. And now, round two begins. And scene. And scene. Thank you. Um, so at the end of, uh, well, I should say at the start of this round, we drew some cards off of the top of this deck. We did. This is the encounter deck, and this is all the random bad crap that happens to us. Uh, so during that Monsters, time... Monsters, curses, stuff right. like that. Ancient evils were on your tail mm -hmm. and added an extra doom counter yep. to our agenda. Meanwhile, a ghoul minion came out of the dirt and has now engaged me yep. in the hallway. So uh, I can't do much until this ghoul goes away. Right. So on so, my turn, I will probably start by trying to punch it in the face with the knife. So with that ghoul in your face, you, I mean, you just said it, I guess, but I want to kind of be clear... You said you can't do much, so you have to interact with that first? You have to do something to that ghoul engaging you? You couldn't just like run away? If you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, you might be familiar with the term the attack of opportunity. Uh -huh. And yeah. that applies here. Mm -hmm. If I do basically non-confrontational actions while engaged with an enemy, that enemy gets a free attack, and, uh, in, and so it will just automatically do its damage. Okay. It, uh, this ghoul does one... Health damage and one horror, which is your mental Zero, damage. Of course. Right. Uh, so I could play a card from my hand, but uh, if I do, I will take a damage and a horror. Okay. Uh, so. Because he gets to commit a crime of opportunity. A crime of opportunity. Yeah, and the law, in the eyes of the law, that maybe will have different implications than like premeditated. Yeah. Right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, so that's what I've got going on. Uh, meanwhile, our goal is to advance the act with clues, and currently there are no clues on the table. So, Scott, the you, barrier. You got to go hunt. Okay, so I could allow you to go first and deal with that right now. Right. But you were saying I got to go hunting. So, do you want? Do you think it makes more sense for me to go somewhere else and do business, uh, or do you want to take care of the ghoul first by acting first in the second round? Um, it probably doesn't matter. Okay. I'll go first and just act out the, the, the turn. Yeah, and, and I'm kind of curious kinda about combat because we there, we didn't get to any in the first round. Right. And so I haven't seen any of that. Right. Um, so yeah, why don't you go deal with that ghoul first? Cool. Uh, so, uh, my first action is going to be uh, to use my survival life action, mm -hmm. uh, which lets me fight. And you're going to chop some onions. And I get plus one might for this attack. I start, Zoe starts with a, a might of four, plus one is five. The ghoul has a difficulty of two to fight, so I have to tie or beat a two, and I'm starting at five. You might say, wow, Graham, that sounds like you're Graham, basically... Graham, that sounds like you're basically... Gonna, gonna get this. Get this. It's just super easy. Super 
e easy, right? Easy. That's right. I didn't get that second word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to draw a token from the chaos bag. These uh -huh. uh, tokens have plus one to minus four on them, along with. We some... drank all the crown royale already. We already drank all the crown royale. So yeah, in this the, bag. before the first round, you have to drink a all whole, the crown royale. A whole crown right? royale. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so now we're super wasted. Yep. And hopefully that doesn't inhibit me from attacking this ghoul. And it does. The token does is minus Very four. much. Ooh, that's not good. So I said I start at a five. That brings me down to a one. One does not meet or exceed two. So. Okay, so one, two. Now you're confusing, one. You're confusing our pathways Okay, now. you're right. This the isn't. The winding hallways. You're, I had a, I, I hate. I'm not good with counting words or numbers, so I needed okay. to use my, my, these matchsticks to, okay. I gotcha. to see that two is bigger than one. Right. Um, I trust you, but I need to learn on my own. Uh, well. So you failed. So I failed. That's not good. Nothing else happens, though. That's not that bad, I guess. Because this was an action that... I just wasted the action, right? Okay. If I he doesn't like, get, like, a retaliation or anything? Uh, he does not, although some monsters do. It, they will say retaliate say on them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so for my second action, I'm going to do the same thing because I can't do much. And you get three actions. You get three actions. You might as well keep trying to stab that ghoul. I could improve my chances by playing cards from my hand, but this guy is a relatively easy enemy, and I'd rather save those cards for when we have tougher enemies. Okay. So Makes sense. My second action is going to be to, again, fight with the survival knife. I have a five. You're trying to beat a two. I drew that two. <laughs> on a four. That's still... Uh, hold on, look, let me get the match six again. Make sure that that's still oh not... Oh my gosh. All right, so I got a one, and he got a five. Um, well, there's a minus four in there, and then there's an automatic fail. And the other 14 tokens in that bag will let me succeed. So oh, there's I'm, only one minus four? There's only one minus four. You need, here, you need to bag. shake the bag up yeah. a little more. Shake, shake it up. If you're wondering... What's the deal with the bag instead of dice? It's because each scenario changes what's in oh, the bag. Oh, I actually, I, I assumed it was just a universal token pool. Right. But it's not. That's cool. That it's different things for different scenarios. And you can also adjust your difficulty. So uh, we're playing on standard. We can make this easier. We can make it harder Get as well by changing the tokens that, the are, amount that are in there. Right. So third action, final action. I'm going to stand this ghoul real hard. And you did. I did. Minus two. It's still. So are most, I haven't looked at those. Are most of them minuses? Um, yes, there's one plus one. Okay. There are two zeros, three negative ones, two negative twos, a negative three, a negative four. Okay. And a variety okay. of special Just tokens spread. that are usually Different zero to minus two. Which so. is how, just, I guess it's a point, that's how we got, or no, no, we got an extra horror from that guy. From that's right. The but ha had I horror. failed an investigation, I would have gotten an extra horror because I had drawn that green hooded man. That's right. He looks kind of like, um... You know the Living Tribunal? Is that, is that a name that rings any relevance to you? No, he's, I was going to say he's a Marvel he looks Comics like guy. a cultist. Okay, the Living Tribunal looks kind of like a cultist. He's, what, he's a Marvel guy, he wears a hood, he's yellow. What else is there to know, right? Ezio Aldatore. Ezio Aldatore. He looks like an assassin. Hey, Scott. Hey, Graham. I'm out of actions. Okay. and it's you. My turn. So you defeated the ghoul. I defeated the ghoul. He went to the discard pile. And do you get anything for that, or you just get your freedom? I Now I just have my freedom back. That's good. And you know what? what? It's priceless. Freedom is priceless. That's right. Uh, all right. So now it's my action. That's right. I'm in this physical space as I represented by this card. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not dead. You just flipped this because you're, you can't do I anything. Think I'm now exhausted. Okay. That's right. Cool. So, what can I do in this room? I can move. Uh, Essentially, move to now, an adjacent room. We could read the flavor text on all of these. Uh, the cellar and the attic are going to give us some flavor. The parlor says there is a flaming hot barrier in front of this parlor, which is what I was reading at the beginning, mm -hmm. and you cannot enter this yet. Mm, so, right. technically, this is not really an option. We're not. We're not actually connected here. Right. We we put these matchsticks down. Did, uh, did we say that to connect these rooms? I don't think we specifically said it. Yeah, the, it's not part of the game. The d game, right, does not include these That's cheap sort of uh, splintering wooden sticks. Right, <laughs> it's not right. a piece of the game. Uh, <laughs> uh, normally, but, it's just these icons That's right. connect things. But you said that in some scenarios, it can get a little confusing. Mm -hmm. What's connecting to what? Yeah. So I might show you one in a little bit that's very uh, complicated. So Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to see some, some other scenarios yeah. here. We're not going to finish this right now. I'd like no. to see some others in a bit. But um, so these are just to make it clear. This connects here. This connects here. All that. But that doesn't connect there. Not right now. Um, so, well, spoiler alert. You know, I don't know that it's going to connect okay, down there. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I guess I do know it doesn't. Uh, it has a little icon. So you, 
you are going to want to move to one of these. The okay. question is if there's a card in your hand that you'd like to play first, because you don't know what you're going to encounter when you go into these rooms. Right. So I have some skill cards. Hold on to those. Uh, like I do those. While you are reaching doing, your hand to When the I'm bag. doing something else. Yeah. And then I've got an event card, but that doesn't play right now, I see. So then I have a couple of these other cards that talk about like drawing signs uh, or like put call of the unknown somewhere. Like I, what, I don't know what that means. That's a little, I'm lost on that one. Uh, what is the name of that card? Uh, oh, it's the name of the card. Okay. I, so there, there's kind of a lot of text on some of these. They're, like stuff isn't always obvious what's what. Sure. So it, it I missed that was the name of the card. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> like I, a word. I, words aren't my strong suit. I've played this game maybe four times before, and I just got this collection this week. So yeah. like, I don't even know what most of these cards do. Sure, that's fair. Um, so I'm looking at some of these cards, some of these blue-looking cards that are uh, treachery cards. Um, the treacheries technically get shuffled back into your deck, which is part of the like drawing your starting hand, mulliganing, drawing up to five like there's a process at the beginning that we all skipped because we started recording so technically that treachery should be back into your deck hmm. it shouldn't be ever in your hand ever okay you have two of them i do well put those two aside okay for a second draw two more cards and then you'll shuffle these back into your deck and these go back in the deck that's right and that's what you would do at the start of the game is you drop to five put aside the treacheries Put aside any other cards that you maybe don't want yet or don't want till later, and then draw back up to five, and that's your starting. Okay. 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 So that's uh, Scott was just doing that for your benefit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So <laughs> you made me do this stupid little thing, Graham. Okay. Well. Taken care of. There you go. Making me look like a real jerk. Um, assets are the kinds of cards that you play in front of you and just sit there, like my survival knife. So those yeah. would be the ones that I would keep. Yeah, I don't have. Hand. I don't have any of that. Uh, actually, no. I did just get one. Uh, so, if I play this flashlight, spoiler, I don't know, I, what's, what is the etiquette in this game? Is it, our hands are private, or uh, should we be... Technically, we our talk? hands are private, where you can't show your opponent what's in them, but you can describe what you can do. Hmm, So, okay. instead of Is saying, there a reason to be deceptive about that? Uh, it is... Basically, just trying to prevent the point where everyone plays their hands face up on the table. Yeah. Because that invites quarterbacking, okay. where okay. the more experienced sort person can tell the other one what to do. Well, you know what? I think. Uh, well, what's shroud? Shroud is the shroud is the to difficulty. Me. Okay. Uh, flash. I would suggest that you play something that will help you investigate, flashlight included. Okay. And then you move to a location. That's right, because this doesn't. This goes on me. It doesn't go in the room. That's right. That, okay, cool. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play this flashlight down here. Okay. And uh, I mean, just so you kind of see what I've been looking at. Um, so uh, I got this flashlight. It gives you a, a special uh, action where you use up some of the batteries to search your uh, location, but the difficulty of that location is lowered by two. Right, and shroud is the uh, shroud black is, is number the, right here. Yes, that's right. In that corner. That'll be the difficulty of finding clues at a location. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to play this down here, uh, and I have to spend two or one supply, which is this is supply, right? Is uh, it it's, it's actually the cost is the two in the corner. So you actually spend two to oh, play to that. Play card. it. Okay. And then it says when, when it comes I to want play. to do that as an action because it's got arrows. Right. Right. I would then play one of these to turn my flashlight on. Yes. So one of the well the. That's what I'm, I'm trying to say here. So at the, the top of the card, it says like uses and then three supplies. Okay. Does that say yes, it? it does. So you take when you play that card, it comes into play with some uses. Three represented by resource tokens, which you put on the card. And when you take that action, you spend the supplies of oh, that card. I see. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. On That's the okay. That makes uh, sense. That it goes with what the battery thing you were talking about was. That's right. And then it's got this little book. That makes me smarter. Uh, it would if instead of playing the flashlight on the table, you discarded it to, to increase your uh, chance of winning at a specific skill check. But I'm, already, but I'm pretty smart already. You're pretty smart so already. I, th I think a flashlight's going to uh, benefit me more. Right. If you think okay. about it, it's minus two three times or plus one once. Sure. Obviously, it's, it's better to do that. It is. So, all right. So that's one thing I did, mm -hmm. right? I played that. Yeah. Then 
Uh, I could investigate my location. And I know it has a one, right? But there are no clues But there are here. no clues here where there were before. So, right. so you would you suggest moving might make the most sense right now? I think so. Okay, so I think the attic is less scary than the cellar. Okay, well, the attic says... The smell of rotten meat assaults your nostrils as you it's approach fine, the attic fine. stairs. Someone was just storing something in like a freezer upstairs. The, they lost power at some point and now it rotted. That's right. We've all been there. Yeah. We've all been there. Uh, it happened to me today. I was like, what smells like meat in my room? And it was, uh, I just left meat there. So. Yeah, it's happening right now. That's why it smells so bad in here. I wasn't going to point it out, it's but... 65 pounds of pork. It's the... Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> there's a lot of meat, my friend. It's all rotten. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> uh, so are you moving to the attic? I am going to move into the attic. So I'm going to take my my lady here. All righty. I'm going we will here. flip the attic over because it's been discovered. All right, so why don't we stick it, stick it over here so I can um, take yes. a look. Yes, so... Uh, so the attic, it's a funny looking joint here. Uh, all right, so it's got a, uh, an investigative war shroud, shroud, right? Shroud of one. It's got two clues. Two per investigator. Four clues. That's right. Man, Blue would love this place. Uh, Blue a, would have a field day because yeah. he's like, look at all these clues I can get. He loves clues. Uh, also, Blue would have a field day because if you read the flavor text, it says that there's a giant carcass that's hanging from the ceiling oh. and dripping blood into a bucket. Okay. Which is what blue is what all about. What would a dog do if not eat a carcass? Right. So uh, you got four clues you're putting over here. I'm going to put some clues down. And I'm the clue master. You are the clue girl. What's that guy's name? Blue's clue. What's his like? His, his Steve. Owner's name? Steve. Yeah. Stephen Blue. Stephen Blue. Uh, also, something happens here. Uh, it says forced. Yeah. When you reveal that card, forced actions occur. Okay. Uh, what is, wow, what is this a Star Wars crossover too? This is crazy. Yeah, may the forced be with you. All right, so I take a horror. Which is a brain. Which is a brain. Oh, right, because horror is... These are doom. The, the red token. I went to grab the red token. Yes. Uh, it's doom. This blue one with a brain. Yeah. That's, doom is yeah, red. I, that, that's what I was grabbing for, the, the, horror, the, the doom. Right. But horror is this brain. I have a brain now. You have one less, less brain. brain. I, have, I had seven brains. Now I only have six you brains. You only have six brains. Uh, okay, so I'm in here. There are clues. I have another action. Uh, you have one action left, and there's clues here. And there are clues there. So yeah, let's reorganize all that. And um, um, I'll use my last action to go take a look for some uh, brains. For clues. You're looking <laughs> for clues uh, yeah. in the meat shack. But upstairs. clues, maybe the clue is there's a brain in there and that'll have like writing on it. So I'm gonna go take a look. I'm gonna shake up this not crown royal bag. All right, so are you uh, committing anything to your check? You, you I, have have a, I, I only need a one and I have a four. Yes. I feel like unless I pull and minus four, there's Which one minus four, one. and there's one auto fail. And there's an auto fail. So there are, what I'm feeling out here, like... Right, 14 other tokens. I was going to say, I was going to say like 10, 12, okay, 14 other tokens. Right? 14, 16 so in So there's here. 16 in the bag. Yeah. I'm, no way. No way. <laughs> no way. Just rip that token out right now. Just rip it. It's a zero. It's a zero. You succeeded. I succeeded. There's a clue. Thank you, sir. Put that right on your character. So now I'm one-sixth of the way to we're, discover We're it. so close to discovering this. Yep. Alrighty, so now we move on to the next phase of the round, which is the enemy phase. Okay. There are no enemies because I killed my ghoul. Because you killed the ghoul. Uh, now we go to the upkeep phase where all of our exhausted abilities become unexhausted. Mm, okay. Then we each get a resource and a card. One resource. And one card. One card. What happens with treachery? Uh, it usually says, like, revelation or forced or something on there, right? Yes. But this, in fact, says both. Uh, great. So you do all those things. Okay, so I do this sucker. Call of the Unknown. So this is part of the cool stuff that happens in Arkham. Uh, Call of the Unknown is a card that only goes in Ursula's decks. It mm. goes on all of her decks mm. because she... This is, this is like her weakness. In fact, the subtype of this card is weakness. Uh, Ursula's weakness is that she feels the call of the unknown and will seek out things you can e see that. when it is not opportune You for can her. tell by looking at her. It's just, she, just like... She's looking for something. She's not even looking at the, at the photographer. Yeah. Illustrator. She's well, because like, she's trying... She, like, if you look at the camera, it can be a little funny. It can like, break the fourth wall. That's true. So like, well, what's she looking at just off camera? Right. It's... This, um, it turns out. So you're required to put Call of the Unknown in all of your Ursula decks. Okay. And when you draw Call of the Unknown, some bad things happen to you. So Scott, 
uh, All what right. happens here. So what's going to happen to me is uh, I'm going to put this into my threat area, which is what? What is my threat That's area? That's where I had my monster before. It's just above okay. your Okay, so I'll put that right here. Uh, and then I'm forced. So forced at the beginning of my turn, choose a location other than my location. So not, I'm actually over here. You're actually in the attic. Uh, so not the attic. And when, I tr when uh, my turn ends, if I did not investigate the location I chose, oh man, I take two horror, and then I put this back in my deck. So, uh, okay, that makes sense. Call of the Unknown. I'm mm -hmm. in the cellar. I, f I'm just, I just feel like I should go look for something in the cellar. That's right. If I don't do that, I have to then take horror because I went crazy because I didn't do what I felt like some otherly world was pulling me in to do. Right. Okay. Now, for what it's worth, I'm pretty sure, I'm not a rules expert, so mm -hmm. someone online can correct me, but I'm pretty sure you can choose the hallway to go and investigate the hallway uh, so that it's only one space away. It just says other very, than my location. And it's very easy so. to do. However, if you're, you would just be doing that to get rid of the called the unknown effect. Inefficient. Very. And if you know me, Graham, you know I love efficiency. You're a robot when it comes to efficiency. Thank you. Beep boop, beep boop. Beep boop bop. Efficiency. That's my name. Efficience dash E. Efficience E. Yeah. Well, that's so cute and Thank clever. You. Thank you. It's like Wally. Yeah, I like he, that. He's my brother. I don't like to talk about him. He kind of. I'm always in his <laughs> shadow. I can't escape from it. Wall and his brother Efficience. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we drew our cards. We resolved the thing that's happening there. You're going to feel compelled to do some stuff in a minute. Uh, we would discard down to eight cards, which you will never do because you never have that I'm many cards. I'm certainly not at eight cards. Uh, and then four the cards. round starts over. And I think we should at least go through this mythos phase. Yeah, let's, let's check out the mythos phase. Uh, see what happens here. So first, the first thing that happens is that we place a Doom on the agenda. Okay. Which we'll do. Uh, then, Playing Dota the second step here. is advance agenda if Doom Threshold is satisfied. This is the Doom Threshold. It's three. We got three Doom. So it has to meet that threshold, not meet. exceed it. That's correct. Okay. Is there anything in this game? I know that, like rolling or rolling, pulling out tokens for this has to meet. Is there anything that's like you have to exceed that number? Not really. Typically the function is meet or exceed. That's right. Okay. Uh, sometimes they count how much you meet or exceed by. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, how much you fail or exceed by. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, but you, you meet it by zero. <laughs> that, there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to advance the agenda because we right. are, have now satisfied the Doom Threshold. So, so, what, so, so what's going on now? Uh, so, well, what's going on is that we heard a bunch of things tunneling in the walls. I didn't play as well. Cause it, said, it, says, okay, it says what's going on in this card. I, right. was trying to be a, I was trying to do a joke. Well, I know. but, the, but see, You couldn't the, read it. This I, is, the, we read this at, during the first round. So that's Did why we, we knew, we knew okay. what was happening. Wink, wink. I didn't remember. So who, um, who, who's going to remember that? What's going on is a lapse in time. Uh, your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed, and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It's almost as if you had been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognize elements of your former home. Uh, you know what? We're in the hallway because they said the hallway's floor was already dirt. Well, yeah, but it's you just seeing more... Are you going to nitpick every little flavor text that's on every one of these cards? Because this video is going to take like eight hours. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let me take a look at this one for a little bit. Um, so the lead investigator, you must decide. And uh, Scott, you are the lead investigator. I always recommend that the newest person be lead investigator. Is that something you decide at the beginning of a game? That's right. Okay. Uh, which is definitely something that we totally talked about. Yes. In that you are the lead investigator. I am the lead investigator. Uh, so you must decide either... Each investigator discards a card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. And that is a choice for you to decide. I, you know what? A good leader leads. Good leader leads. I'm really smart already. You're pretty smart. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm very smart. Yes. I went to a highly educated university. Miskatonic University. And I'm going to draw two horrors. And you put them on Ursula's card. Yes. Cool. No, don't say I never did anything for you. You did something for me. Thank you. Right now. Uh, so now... You can say that as many times as you want. Yes. You are the best. Thank you. Keep, Let keep, me tell you about how great you are. Okay. Uh, so now we're on to Rise of the Ghouls, um, which is the next agenda in the agenda deck. Uh, and this says... The floor beneath you is giving way, and below you, you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes, of silhouettes of, and, shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. 
ominous. So there's ghouls. There are ghouls, which I, I knew Beneath because us. you fought one, but now maybe I were suspecting they're coming from There's more than one. Ground. We were hoping, like, maybe it's just Gary. It was He's just Gary. Just Gary the ghoul. But in fact, all of Gary's friends. So, okay, cool. So this scenario is like a... Um, it, it's, it introduces stuff kind of slowly to you, kind of simply. The ghoul didn't seem too wacky. That's right. He didn't do anything crazy. That's right. Um, why don't we jump ahead a bit, maybe a scenario or two? Sure. Uh, and see what it looks like. Because this, you know, you've got these four rooms. Um, What's going to happen is we're, we'll collect some clues, which is going to open up this doorway. Yeah. And then something happens. There's mysteries over here. Um, something happens. Yeah, why don't we check out another scenario? Cool. See, see what that looks like. Beep. All right. So we've got a new scenario set up here. Yes. This, I'm going to say, looks way beefier than the it's, other one. It's a beefier boy. The yeah. other guy, it started off with a study here that opened up to four extra spaces. Right. This here, we've got nine set out. This, what is this here? The south, south side. side. This has a man on it. Yeah. And then we're just a couple of ladies hanging out at your house. Right. Specifically, it is your house, Ursula. Because I'm Ursula. the lead investigator. Because you're the lead investigator, uh -huh. that's right. So this is uh, a city map, so to speak, of Arkham, Massachusetts. Arkham, Massachusetts. So we're still in, does every scenario take place in Arkham, Massachusetts? Uh, I'm going to say no. That being said, I've only played two scenarios. Okay, so there The could last be, one and this one. There could be some stuff in there. Right. That you're not expecting. Uh, but, so we're starting at your house because we were just in your house. Mm -hmm. Like we were in the study in the hallway in the attic of right. your house. And so now we have just left. Sure. In your house, talking like 1995 WWF. Yeah. In your house, like Great White North. What, what kind of pay-per-view are we talking here? Uh, Diesel on it, Vader. All of those. It's a, re <laughs> it's a super pay-per-view. All right. It has all of those things. We're in your house tonight. What are we doing? So our act says uncovering the conspiracy. Uh, essentially, we are trying to track down specific cultists that have summoned these ghouls to Arkham. Hmm. Uh, these cultists are in this extra special cultist Yeah, deck. I noticed here, I uh, was pointing out to you a second ago, or asking you a second ago, before we just had this deck here of the baddies. Right. But now, zoop, we got this sideways baddie deck. And that is specific to this scenario. Okay. Uh, so this is our normal baddie deck. We'll still draw these at the start of every round. But this is like seated in some way where there are specific Yes. So characters. the last half of this act says that we can spend four clues uh, as a group as, and an action to draw the top card of the cultist deck. That cultist this is will the then, cultist deck. That's right. And okay. then that cultist will specifically tell us where they are spawned. We can go and essentially beat them up, interrogate them, or kill them. Uh, and... Uh, our objective is to uh, find as many of these cultists what is, uh, and add them to the victory display, which is basically we've beaten them up or interrogated them and added them to our score area. Okay. Uh, there's a maximum of six. If we get all six, we win outright. Um, but remember that we're trying to get those before our clock runs out. And so the we, clock here being this the, doom track. The clock track. being this doom track on the agenda deck. Okay. Uh, so after six doom gets played on this top agenda, we'll move to the move next to the one. the bottom one or and, eight. And then once we hit eight doom, we lose. Game's over. We have an action that we can take, which mm -hmm. is to resign. To and that up. means that we just pull out of the mission. So what is likely to happen is that we'll find some of our cultists, and then we will not be good enough to get all of them, but we can spend actions to resign which will be sort of like a, a middle-of-the-road victory. Okay, so the scenario still ends when yes. we resign, but it's sort of like a moral, like, we didn't die. Right. The world isn't doomed yet. What's cool is the, what happens in this scenario will then affect the last scenario in this campaign. Oh, so cool. So the number of cultists that we track down will then give us, like, the more we get, the more benefit we get for the next scenario. Oh, that's scenario. neat. I, yeah, I guess I... Going into this, I didn't know when this was like a play A, then B, then C, then D type yeah. thing. I thought it was, this is a scenario we're playing, we're going to play it and be done with it. It's completely self-contained. Right. Um, but that's neat. So you're kind of thinking like, hey, should we cut our losses? We got, what, four of these six guys. Mm -hmm. Are we good? Can we just get out of here? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that's right. That's neat. I, that, that's cool. That's cool. 
And right now we have one guy out. This this guy is an acolyte, and he's sort of part of this deck, right? He's uh, he is the first guy. Actually, not. He's part of this deck. He's part of the other one, the regular one. Uh, this specifically says that we need unique cultists. Mm. So this is like you Mid-mage. know J- James the cultist, okay. and it has a little unique symbol. Okay. This is Rando Acolyte. Should we pull one of these out to yeah, yeah. Shot? or or well, I mean, do you think we'll run into one? Uh, hopefully. Let's let's see. Let's, Let, let's see what happens. Let's, let's do. Let's go through this a bit. Let's if we run into one, great. If we don't, I'd like to kind of see some of these guys. Cool. Cool. Um, Sounds great. I'll spoil myself, you know, for what could come up. Right. Um. So we're in your house. Right. Uh huh. And uh, well, your house. beware of dog. And um. It says. What does it say? Oh, um. Forced. Oh, okay. Uh, it says forced when the ghoul priest spawns. Spawn it here instead of his normal location. So uh, the ghoul priest. Yes. He's so, in one of these two? Uh, he is actually placed outside of the scenario, and I have him in the box over here. Ah, okay. But there's an event that could trigger, apparently. Don't bring him out. Apparently, that has something to do with the ghoul priest. It's spooky. Uh, we also have a action that we can take once per turn that lets us draw one card and gain one resource while we are at the house. Okay, so we can just take that action to get some resources. That's right. Get some stuff. And so, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm uh, going to take advantage of that action while I'm here, probably play a card for my hand, and then maybe start moving towards Rivertown because we want okay. to discover locations and find clues so we can turn in those clues to access the cultists. Sure. And I, I see here why these little connectors, these matchsticks, help. Yes. Because this is... You gotta remember what goes where and all that. This is very complicated yeah, in terms of the that map. This can't go here. Most here. scenarios are not quite this bad. Sure, it's cool. I I, I like it. I like the matchsticks help immensely. So, um, okay, so I'm the leader, yes. the investigative leader, and uh, like I said before, a great leader lets lead. So I'm gonna let you lead off here. Wise words. Thank you. Uh, so I get three actions on my turn. My first action, I'm going to take advantage of the action on your house, which is to draw a card and gain a resource. Mm-hmm. That's just efficient. Uh, I started the scenario with five, so now I'm to six. Um, I am. Let's see what I'm going to put down here. Uh, I want to be. I want to be ready. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I, I want to be mm-hmm. ready for anything. So. I don't know if you knew this, but Zoe the chef, she's got a regular. That oh. regular is a beat cop. A beat cop. Yes. Uh, and he improves my f- uh, might by one. Um, and then for my last action, I want to start exploring and see what's going on here. So I'm going to move to Rivertown. Move to Rivertown. And uh, see what's when in there. we access, or when I move to Rivertown, it gets revealed. Um, it says, there's something unsettling about the water of the Miskatonic River tonight. It ripples and bubbles as though something is moving beneath Stick it down. The let's, get a, let's get a nice shot of Rivertown. Rivertown. Ooh, look at Rivertown. Uh, you'll notice that uh, on the right, it says that there is, uh, we, we place one clue per player. Per player, so it's two. And the shroud here is only one. So these are very easy clues to very pick up. Very easy. Rivertown, look, the people in Rivertown are not subtle people. They, okay. They're just like, hey, you want to know something? I'll tell you. Yeah, they're, you, you there. You there. I want to tell you something. They don't have newspapers. They just print the headlines on billboards around town. Right. Oh, it's just crazy that they're just spending that kind of money. Yeah. But you know what? I'm not complaining. Yeah, what are you going to do? I mean, in Massachusetts, right? Right. In Rivertown. Uh, so it, here's the thing. Um, you're good at searching, but this is so easy to search. You might as well. So I might do that. While I'm there. Now, I'm out of action, so I actually can't do Oh, okay, that. so you can't do that. Um, so right, because you got your beat cop buddy. You moved. What else did you do? What was uh, your third move? I used the action. That's I right, you got, you got stuff. Draw. Yep. Got it. Uh, so those are my three actions. Uh, so your options are you know, to maybe move here and pick up these clues, but they're very easy. This should have started with some clues in it, shouldn't it have? Two? Oh, you're right. This, this has clues right here. It has a little a little man on it. So actually, what I might consider for you is to just Start. pick up these little clue boys. Now, you'd think that it being my house, I would know what's going on there. Right? Well, this is what, now we're outside. And now that we know that there's cultists around, you're like, okay. you know, I never looked at that garden hose. I never noticed that the, the black glove with the blood on it on my 
lawn. Right. Yeah. Or that scarecrow, I just assumed that I put it there, but in fact, I didn't. Yeah. And now that's weird. That's a, is that, that is weird because I don't own a farm. Why would I put a scarecrow? I don't know. What am I worried about crows for? Here's the cultists getting into your head. Yeah. Oof, they're in my, they're deep. They're my deep friend. in your head. So anyway, you get three actions. Okay, Graham. I'm going to, I think, check out that uh, scarecrow. You're going to look at the scarecrow, do some little I'm going to spend the next eight hours just staring at the scarecrow. Well, that's a long time. So. Let's see. Uh, Are you committing anything to this test? You know, it, it's, it is a two. Uh, I, have a, I have a search or an intel a knowledge. Knowledge? Is uh, that intellect? Intellect. It's a book. Okay, I have an intellect of four. So, uh, barring any major gaffe, I should be okay. You have, a, you have a pretty good shot at it. Let me see. What? Because I, I have if a couple have... of assets, but nothing... Um, if you have like a you know magnifying what? Okay. glass or something that gives you like a permanent, I don't unfortunately. Bonus, then that's pretty good. What I am gonna do, I think, is I'll spend an action, mm -hmm. putting this tooth of Esley. It's kind of a hard one to say. Yeah. Uh, put it on my wrist. Okay. I forgot I bought it at the thrift shop earlier, and I meant to put it on because it's kind of cute. Yeah. So I get a plus one head and a plus one Pegasus boot when I'm resolving an ability on a treachery card. So that doesn't apply here. It doesn't apply here. It will apply when For later on, or if I, if I draw out. treachery cards out of here. Um, but, but, I do have the little swirly arrow, which is a recheck. It's a reaction. Reaction. If I succeed at a skill test when resolving an ability on a treachery card, I can, oh, it's on a treachery card too. So I, right. this is all treachery based, but I want to get it down because I'm going to be drawing cards. That's right. Um, I, I did misread the bottom part initially, but I'll still play it. I don't that's think it's okay. crazy to play it. So anyway, you have to spend your three resources to play that. That's right? cool. Because I, I, I actually, you know what? Thank you for that note, Graham, because I also have uh, in the, uh, the Scarecrow, I remembered. Doesn't help me with the investigation, sure. but I, after staring at it for six and a half hours, I remembered that I had an emergency cache. Oh, nice. Uh, stored in the eyes of the scarecrow. Wow, so you just plucked those guys out. I just out. took them out, yeah. And now you get three more resources. So now I got my resources back. That goes to your discard pile. Goes to my discard pile. It'll sit right there. So uh, I get my three ducks. So your first action back. was plan. Planning for the future. And then second action was your cash yep and your third action I'm gonna investigate. investigate I'm gonna investigate straight away like I said I, I, I am confident that with my four against a two sure I'll be okay well, we'll see if that confidence is is misplaced or not right it is a minus one okay no you issue you succeeded no issue here's a clue thank you my friend here you go uh, great, so now I've acted. I would flip that over, but right. because it's the end of the round, can I just leave it face up? Uh, well, just to go through the, uh, just, I guess, okay, the yeah, phases, sure, there's sure. an enemy phase, and we do have an acolyte on the table. Uh, he, uh, some enemies have the hunter keyword. This one does not. If they have the hunter keyword, do they then look they for move. you? Okay. Then they move. Yeah. Uh, then if they're engaged with anyone, they would attack. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have not. Usually you do, I understand that as someone who's currently engaged, you, I, do, I feel myself being more hostile towards people around me. Just in general, because you're like, I've committed my life right. to this very special this someone. This is my person, this is, look, and, back, back off, buddy. And so now I will fight right. anyone who comes near me. There are billions of people in this world, Graham. And, and all now of them, that I'm engaged, I need to fight all of them. You need to fight all. I need a street fight all, every one of them. Street fight five. Uh-huh, I need a street fight five, arcade edition, all of them. <laughs> Uh, all right, end of the round. We're gonna. And I'm the guile to do it. Here's a resource. Draw a card. And I'm the guy to do it. Um, cool. We have cards. Yes, I do. Uh, we start the round with the mythos phase, and we're gonna add a doom to this agenda. Now, our agenda threshold here is six. It's worth pointing out that this is doom on all cards. Oh, interesting. In play. So that counts. The acolyte his. has a doom on it. So we're, so we're a, a third of the way to being doomed. Right. But the advantage of the acolyte is that you I can, can punch him. Take him out. And then get rid of the doom. Street fight him. Street fight five him. Mm -hmm. You can virtua fighter him. <laughs> uh, and now we are each going to draw a card, and you get to go first because you're the lead investigator. Okay, so I'm going to flip this sucker over, and it is. <gasps> dun 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 dun. <laughs> A crypt. crypt chill. Chill. It's a treachery card. Hazard. Revelation. Take four brain. Test four brain. Test four brain. If you fail, choose and discard an asset I control. If I can't, I take two damage. But I, I do have an asset. Uh, okay, so now this thing that I have. That's right. Is I get a brain and a fleet of foot uh, when I'm resolving an ability in a treachery card. Which is this. That's this. So test 
you also have to explain to me what testing brain is uh, that had not come up in our previous game. Sure. So uh, essentially, when you investigate, you are testing book, if that makes sense. Doesn't, but continue to explain. Okay. So when you've investigated before, you said, my book is four. Ah, right. This right, right, difficulty right. is two. Intelligence. Intelligence. That's right. It's intellect, but yes. So now we're testing for willpower. And it's difficulty That's the head, four. willpower. Okay. So I need to draw... Something out of here. That's right. And it's going to need to meet, beat, meet, meet or beat four. That's right. I have this thing, which gives me a plus one willpower. That's right. So mine is at base three. Right. Plus one from my little bracelet. Right. Is a four. And so I need to just not draw negatives, I guess. Uh, right? if, do you check the cards in your hand and see if any uh, of them sure. can something. be committed with a mind counter. A mind, oh, like I, right, that's the, the icon in like the upper left of the cards, right? That's right, that's right. So even though like you might have a card in your hand that's an event, I can ignore can, that. Normally, just... you could play the event, but right now, you can actually discard it to improve your chances of succeeding. Okay, and even upping it by one, I think, would be significant. And what's the cost of that? Is that the cost of the upper left of the card, or is it no cost? There's no cost when if you're I'm committing using it cards to a skill. I do have this, I have, um. Apparently, I, I drew some preposterous sketches. Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> I was just drawing. I drew uh, Grimace, you know, the McDonald's character. Yeah. I drew him playing baseball, but check this out. He was playing for the Green Bay Packers, and they're not a baseball team. What? That's, that's preposterous. preposterous. Well, good thing that uh, that's going to keep you warm against this Crypt Chill. Yep. So you're discarding that. And so now that, oh, I'm at a five because this five. gave me a plus one to my intellect. That's right. Does this or only willpower. willpower? Thank you. It also gives me plus one to intellect for that matter. Right. Which is my question: Is this discard only for this action, or do I have plus one to both of those things now for just the turn? Just for this one. Okay. Check. Just for this guy. All cool. Right. So I'm at a five. Unfortunately, that's all I can do for myself. Sure. In this case. Uh, if I succeed, now I can also get cards by discarding that. If I want, but the bonus is kind of nice. Uh, you don't actually have to discard it. It's just an ongoing thing. Uh, oh, exhaust it. Exhaust it. Ex you, oh, you oh it yeah, exhaust. Yeah. Okay, so this one I drew, it is a minus one, which sets me at four. Because you discarded the card. Because of Grimace. You could, Grimace saved your butt. Aaron Rodgers' Grimace saved me. Kobe. Yep, dunk, done. Uh, all right, so Crypt Chill's Crypt done. Chill. You succeeded. So that man, I feel kind of bad for him. He's trying to escape... He's just he's just a real cold boy. You know? He is. He's a very cold guy. He doesn't look like a bad guy. Like look at look what look at that boy I mean, looks I like. I think it's like it's supposed to be you, maybe. That's well, that's not right. That's not me. Okay, well, this is Derek, and Derek. He, he's very cold, and he's trying to touch you. He looks like he needs help. He doesn't look like a ma a bad guy. <laughs> well, he, you didn't give him help, but you did give him. A grimace. I gave him a grimace illustration, <laughs> and he said, "Okay, you can go." All right. Well, uh, so you have succeeded. Okay, so at this. I've succeeded. Uh, and now you can exhaust your a snake, uh, bracelet. snake bracelet and draw a card. Okay, as Which you I do. So uh, to exhaust it, is there some official significance? Nah, so like, do I? Okay. Oh uh, yeah. They would call it tapping, but that's patented yeah, magic. So patented. just and now you draw a card. Okay. Uh, and now that was. Uh, you, the card that you drew from the encounter deck. So now you do that. I will draw one, and it says false lead. R upon reveal, if you have no clues, false lead gains surge, which means that I discard it and draw another one. Uh, if I have one or more clues, I have to test intellect, uh, and then I would, could lose clues at my location. Uh, but I don't have clues. However, this gains surge, which is just a card effect that says that I draw another card. It is another false lead. So we're just going to We're just going to keep on surging my way through. Oh my false gosh, lead. it's a crypt chill. Oh my goodness, it's so cold out here. It's it is a frosty September evening. Yeah. Uh, so I have to test four four willpower and I start with one willpower. That's um, not good. <laughs> That's rough. Uh, I'm sorry. I I misspoke. Uh, it's four willpower and you start with I start with four willpower. I see. Yeah, so, you start with four. Uh, but I bad. actually don't Better have anything that I am allowed to commit to this test. Ooh, so you just need... So I need a zero or a plus a one. Nil. Or possibly one of these special symbols. Um, these all give you negatives, so... Well, but it says X is the number of stuff, and it could be like oh. X equals zero. Oh. But we'll you cross the bridge when we come to it, what does Skull say? It is the one you called for. Uh, X is the highest number of doom on a cultist enemy in play. He is not a... He is a cultist? Is he a cultist? It, does it say cultist there? It, it says... Does. Oh, I see. He has that little symbol under the... Uh, 
As keywords. He's keywords. His keywords include cultist. Yeah. I didn't notice his keywords before, so below. Something I'm going to say right now about this game, there is a lot of text Everywhere. on these cards. Everywhere. Like, it, at quick glance, it looks like there's not a whole lot being said here, but it's got his name up top. Does that little star symbol underneath mean something? Because on some no. cards it does, like the locks mean something, right? No, the star just means uh, that that is his uh, health. Okay. And then, so then it's got, yeah, it's got three numbers, different colors, and then he's got humanoid and cultist. He's got the spawn ability, which maybe has its own rules. He's forced, which maybe does something. Uh, he's an enemy. It, there's, there's a lot of info on here. A lot on of these cards. It, deceptively. Because when I first looked at these cards, I thought, like, oh, these are super straightforward. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of symbols. The nice thing about that is you just glance at cards and you kind of figure out what's going on. But then when something triggers and you're like, wait, cultist enemies, now all of a sudden you start looking at all the cards and like, sure. oh, this is information that's on there, sure. and yet I didn't have to care about it before. Right. So, uh, but that is definitely something that makes this a card game, not just a board game. Right, right. Uh, um, yeah, not necessarily a criticism, I don't know if I'd say, but an certainly an, uh, yeah, something yeah. that I did not uh, pick up on right away. Uh, so this is a minus one. Because there's a cultist to play. Yep. Uh, which puts me at a three. That puts me at three, oh, which three doesn't beat the four. four. So I have to choose and discard an asset I control, which is my expensive beat cop that I just put in the play. Goodbye, beat cop. Which is a shame. It was so cold that Alfonso was like, I'm out. I'm done with this. Goodbye, Alfonso. Yeah. Uh, so that's the end of the uh, mythos phase, and now it's back to our our turn. To investigation. Yeah, maybe uh, we can do another round here. And then... Yeah, let's let's go through another round here. I because I'd love for one of these guys to turn up. Yeah, and, we need um, four clues. We need four clues. Well, I have one, uh, and you have two available right there. Yeah, uh, I might. Hold on, let me take a look at this. I might be able to pick up that some of those clues. Okay, uh, I also turn. might be able to. If I'm being honest with you. Um, you might be able to pick them all up, and then we can just activate a cultist and I can go hunt them down. You want sure. to try doing that? I, I could try doing that. Let's so, do okay, so this is also untapped, right? Or no, it is tapped because uh, I did it at the beginning of this turn. That's right. So, never mind. Snake bracelet, I lost it. It's okay. Uh, okay. Well, let's get this out of the way first. Uh, I have a hunch. Oh, nice. I have a hunch that there's a clue here. So I'm playing it on my turn. It also says fast on it. What does fast mean? It doesn't cost an action. Oh, that's great. So I'm going to play this only during my turn, uh, and I discover a clue at my location. It cost me two resources. There you go. And I just got the clue straight away. And you still have three actions left. And I still have all my actions. So I'm going to move to Rivertown. That's a single action of the three that I have been uh, given. That's right. By someone. Hewlett Packard. <laughs> uh, and then what I'm going to do is, it's only a one there. I'm not too worried. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and draw. Second action? Are you committing anything to this test? I'm not. Okay. I feel confident that I can take these out. If you had that like cool that card sound. that was like, get I like two that clues. sound, by the way. So they, no, no, this sound. The sound of doom. The rattling of bones. Plot minus one. No issue. Golden. And I've deduced that there's more than one clue here. Sure. So technically, you have to commit that card before you grab it out of the bag. Oh, you need to do it first. Because it says if it's successful. So I have to do it first, and uh, then I have to declare it initially. Yes. That okay. is a mechanic of the skill cards. Oh, I need you, to do that first. Before you reach your hand in the bag. Now. You clearly would have done that if you were right. My that plan, my plan was entirely to take both of those with one go. So we'll just say that you. Thank did you. That. That's very kind That's of fine. you. I know uh, we got we got caught on camera, cheating, cheating. But Scott's new to the game, and I always think that when someone is new to a uh, game, that you have to let them cheat. Cheat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great, great, great game you philosophy. Have, you have to let them cheat. Uh, if, if they don't yeah, understand a rule and get penalized for it, it's sure. not fun. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that depending on the game. It definitely is situational. In games where it's comp this is not competitive, I think it's fair to kind of have some leniency in that mm -hmm. regard. For some games, uh, I definitely would be hardline about that. Yeah. But it certainly depends on the game. Yeah, it also depends on how far you can go back. Yes. So. I think it's always okay to go back in games 
if you have not revealed new information, mm -hmm. or if, if I should say, if new information has not been revealed right. since you did your thing. Right. You know, like someone makes a move, and it's like, okay, Graham, now it's your turn. Yeah. And I say, actually, you know, hold on, hold on. Let me take that back. I think that's okay, as long as you haven't, like, done something. Mm -hmm. uh, or, but yeah, anyway, that's not another here nor there. I mean, it's there, over it's, that it's way, where there. there are other games. And we'll just leave it over there. Um, but you have one action left. So I have an action. And I have a suggestion, because yeah, we can spend an action in four clues to draw the top card of that cultist deck. I think we should do that. I feel like that's what your last action So I'm spending be. these four clues. Uno, dos, tres, four. And we're going to draw this top one, right? That's right. It is... Does he have a name? Oh, no, he does have a name. It's Wolfman Drew. Wolfman Drew. A nickname. Wolfman Drew. Right. He's not a wolfman. No. That's just what they call him it's on the, on the sports team. Him, yeah. uh, so... He's a unique cultist, which Wolfman means that... Wolfman Drew Breeze. Hey, look at that. That's what we're trying to get in this scenario. Uh, he spawns downtown, mm -hmm. which is one of the locations on the map. And uh, when he attacks, uh, he actually heals some damage. Uh, so he could be a little bit hard to take down. He's got four health, which Oof. is that gray number in the middle. Yeah. Um, it's tough. Yeah, he... Uh, he hits hard, too. He hits pretty hard. Uh, at, or he's, he's pretty defensible, I guess, at a four. Uh, and he does two damage when he hits, so that's pretty good. He's easy to evade at a two, uh, but we're going to try to kill him. Okay, so he's downtown. So he's downtown. Which so is we're gonna... two spots away um, right now. Yes. Yeah, so now the bad news is that you're out of actions. I am, so you got to grayscale me. You're in grayscale now, but I could move one, two. And then take a, take a shot and at And hunt him. down Drew. One, two, Drew. One, two, Drew. So hopefully nothing bad happens when I move here. Or... To, to, what is that one? Easton? East Town? East Town. And East then downtown. Town. Downtown. Cruising through the alley. Downtown? That should be uptown, because it's up here. Uh, yep. North side. So I don't know about some of these names, Graham. You got Rivertown. Fine, it's not a direction. South side, okay, it's on the south. If you're calling cardinal directions, it's on the south side of the board. Right. You've north side on the north side, east side over here, but then downtown, which I would think should be down here, on the bottom part of the right. map. Right. Downtown, yes. cruising through the alley. Yes. White walls on the wheels on like the mayonnaise. wheels like mayonnaise. Dope. Dope. That's a song by Malcolm Moore. My first action is going to be <laughs> to move to East Town. We flip that boy over. Hope and, bad stuff doesn't happen. And when you are in East Town, reduce the cost of each ally asset you play by two. How cool is that? That's just good. Uh, I would love to play that beat cop for two. East Town is a place for friends. Now don't waste actions, though, because you still have to make, make it here and fight. I mean, you, oh, do you need man. an action to fight this guy? I do need an action to fight that guy. So you did one, then two, then three. Don't. Right. Um, don't screw this up, OK? Yeah, no pressure. ideally if I had one more action or if I had my beat cop still in play, I could like put down something that's going to make him a little bit easier do to fight. Bad, do some bad news. Uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen, it looks like. It's okay. So my second action is to move downtown. I'm going to flip over the downtown card. Yep. And we're going to put four clues on that location. Uh, downtown. three horror limit once per game. Yeah, so, so you can take an action to, to help yourself out a little bit. Right, which, it's pretty good. you know, if we kept playing this... Uh, oh, I was thinking of the last scenario, actually, where you had all the horror on you. I did, yeah, I had three. Um, three of my seven. So Because I was a good leader. Right. Uh, so, a uh, little bit of rules clarification. Uh, enemies are in locations. If they are upright, they are considered ready. If you as opposed to exhausted. Curve them down. So they have two statuses, ready and exhausted. They're eating a sandwich or something. Whenever you are in the same location as a ready enemy, they immediately move to engage you. Okay, so he's over there now. So he's over here. Um, and I have one action left, and you're not going to believe this, but my action is going to be to punch this dude in the face. Do some dirty deeds. Uh, now, again, I have this gun, and I have this knife, and I just didn't have the actions this round to play him. Yeah, you're going, so, in, you know what, mano we mano you're going to just We're just going to go, we're just going to go ham on Wolfman Drew. Now, the disadvantage is that I'm not going to be doing very much damage. I'm just going to do one damage at a time. But, uh... Werewolves. Do werewolves have culinary weaknesses? Like, vampires don't like garlic. Dude, were oh, werewolves have and silver they don't like. But you don't make kitchen utensils out of silver. 
Uh, Tony, you, like you're a chef, you're a cook, right? That's you. That's right. That's right. Zoe's thing. I uh, know you really don't. Although silver is good against um, like bacteria and disease in water. Mm, copper um, as well. Yeah. Uh, so you know what? I actually, uh, you know, looking at this at this Drew card, uh, he actually recovers damage when he attacks. Oh. So even if I attack, you're sure right he's now, not a vampire? He sounds like a vampire. I think he's just a hungry boy. He's he's Wolfman Drew. Also uh, known as Drew the Vampire. Drew the Vampire, right. So technically, probably what would have been better is that my first action was to move here. Second action would be to play a survival knife. Oh, uh, go take him out later. And then, uh, you know, if I really wanted to, I could move in third action and engage him. And we're going to try doing that. Let's say that's what happened. Let's, let's say, let's say, let's that say that's, that's what happened. happened. So you don't have any more gonna... actions now. So now I'm out of actions. And now it is the enemy's turn. Uh, the cultist doesn't do anything because they're just chanting, mm -hmm. doing their, you know, doom stuff. Um, I've always felt that way about cultists. Yeah. They don't really do anything. Wolfman Drew is going to attack me, actually, though, because he's a crazy man. Uh, so he attacks me, and he does two damage. He doesn't have to do a check or anything. He automatically does whatever damage is on the card. But I'm worried. survival knife, I played it. It says, reaction, after an enemy attack deals damage during the enemy phase. That's right now. Exhaust survival knife. Fight. This attack targets the attacking enemy. I get plus two might to my attack roll, and I deal an extra damage for this attack. See what, see what I did? I you set myself up for success. Took a knife out. I took a knife out. Hey, don't don't like, pretend like it's fancy. You, all right, you just took a knife out. I took out a knife. Uh, and Look, you know an, an unkempt guy named Drew approached you, and you pull out a knife. Well, Drew sucks. Here's the thing. Jeez, what did Drew do to you? Uh, I'm gonna, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna fight him. It's a might uh, skill test, and I'm gonna commit overpower to that skill test. So I actually get, I start at a four. The knife gives me five, six. Overpower makes it seven, eight. Wow. Uh, so I'm extremely likely to land this two damage. And I have determined that the two damage is very important. And this guy's gonna heal. Mm -hmm. So I need to make sure that I kill him on the next round before he heals back up. So I really want this two damage to land right now. He, heal, he heals when he attacks, is that right? That's right. So okay. a round from now, if he's still around, he could heal some of this damage. Got it. So anyway, minus four. I was at eight with You're the overpower. Four. So I am at four, which is the, his uh, combat score, so his difficulty. So you did damage. So I hit him. Uh, and now when you do damage... You either do damage or you don't, right? There's not like if you exceed by three, you do three damage. That's right. You just either do damage or you don't. That's right. Okay. Uh, and now Overpower says, if this test is successful, draw one card. Look at that. I did it. Look at that. Wolfman uh, Drew. Wolfman Drew. So I did all that without spending an action, which is efficient. That's great. It's very efficient. Which Scott loves. Beep boop. Um, so that's the end of the enemy phase. To finish up the round, we'd reactivate all of our stuff. Uh, including your bracelet and my knife. Yep. We would draw a card and get a uh, resource. And then we would move on to cool. the start of the round. Uh, yeah, it's a neat game. I'm Co-op is not my favorite, uh, I don't know if you call it a genre. It's yeah. not my favorite designation for a game. Sure. I like competitive stuff. I yeah. like having to outthink people, not games. Right, because they kind um, of program to just do whatever. Right. And there's always this randomized element to sure. it, too. Uh, I think this game is cool. I, I would certainly want to play more. I'd, I'd be very interested in playing a full campaign. Mm -hmm. I know this is like the, now the second campaign game that I'd like to play with you, yeah. the other one being Imperial Assault. Right. Um, this doesn't have a DM or a GM running it, whereas Imperial Assault does. Yeah. It's, it's like the rebels against the one Imperial versus player. One versus yeah. Uh, but this is cool. I, so I do not like Arkham Horror, the board game, the the, the, board game. the Fantasy Flight big board game. I also I've not played it, but it seems similar. Uh, Eldritch Horror also doesn't look like it's up my alley. Yeah. Um, this seems neat. Uh, it seems less. What's, what's a good word for it? Like aimless. Arkham Horror feels very aimless to me. It feels like yeah. a lot of my turns are um, sort of like, I am I guess I'm going to go over here. I don't, something will happen, maybe. Yeah. Like, I guess I'm going to go check this place out. Oh, whoops, I got sucked into another dimension. Yeah. Uh, and then that slows the game down a bunch. 
Um, I would need to play a little more of this to see how different it is, but it feels at least a little snappier. Uh, it which it I feels appreciate. a little bit tighter. Uh, I, my, my couple thoughts on it are I think a lot of cooperative games are just aimless or they're just throwing things in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. Like Dead of Winter mm -hmm. is like, oh, here's a difficult thing and another problem and another problem and I'll just solve all the problems. Sure. And you're going to do that by moving to locations and grabbing items. Sure. And that's basically all that you do in that game. Arkham Heart of the LCG has the advantage of the narrative. And that right. focuses what you're doing. Right. It also um, kind of, uh, what's, the, what's the word? It takes advantage of the fact that it's a card game by every scenario being totally different from every other scenario. And I think that's really cool. As opposed to, you're at the colony and you are trying to survive. Or, here is the planet and you are flying around trying to find clues mm -hmm. in Eldritch right? Uh, whereas, like, last time we were in a house, now we are in a town. Right. Um, it's cool. Yeah, like Arkham Horror, the board game, has it's a big map. It's got a bunch of stuff all over it. And it's always the same. Every game is the mm -hmm. same. I know there are expansions that, that change some stuff. Um, what's cool with this scenario is... Well, actually, what's not cool about the big map in Arkham Horror, the, the board game, I keep having to remind myself to say the board game because yeah, it's the, the same Yeah, the card game. game is different, right? Um, is it, sometimes areas of that map are just not useful. They're just, you're never going to go there. Right. Whereas with this, because each scenario is going to have its own custom setup, I feel like you'll, you know every spot will have some importance right. because it's built for that scenario. Yes. Uh, they're not going to stick in what the, the uh, attic and the cellar over here on this map. Right. Maybe you'll never go to them. Right. They just don't have relevance in this scenario. Yeah. Um, so, so it seems neat that it's a little more distilled and focused. Yes. Um, I think a disadvantage of this game is the cost. Uh, essentially, the living card game model that Fantasy Flight has uh, encourages you to buy multiples of their core sets. Oh, interesting. So your first core set is more like an introductory experience, usually for two people. Hmm. Arkham and many other LCGs also have more of a multiplayer variant. So Arkham can have up to four. Four, okay. Uh, four investigators at the same time. So, but in order to do that, you need two core sets. Oh, interesting. So it plays like a board game, but what if that board game had no nice components, just chits and cards, and was $80? Jeez. That's what you're looking at. Yeah. And then uh, you can buy essentially micro expansions. They're $15 each. They each come with a new scenario. They come with cards that you can put into these decks, as well as all the cards that you need for the scenarios, and they're all pretty complex. Um, so, y you know, you can buy more expansions just like you could with a board game without having to shell out another, like, 40 bucks for each expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, also, they come out once a month. And, again, these are coming out in a, in a campaign format. So it's kind of like a monthly it's like a TV subscription show. almost. Yeah, where you want to find out what happens next in the story. Interesting. So very yeah, it's a interesting. bit of an odd model. I mean, but, maybe not odd. I guess I could financially understand why they would do it, but right. yeah, it's kind of weird that it supports four, but you need to buy it twice to do that. Yes, it's a little bit weird. I feel like the core set should actually be much cheaper, like twenty-five. I think mm -hmm. right. So twenty-five is a two-player game, and it's sort of an intro. If you want the full experience, you spend fifty. To play up to Which four is about players. the price of a full board game. Right, right. It makes 80, you're, that's pushing it. Well, that's getting into like small publisher, limited run territory. Or like miniature based games. Or miniature games, right? yeah. So I think the price, that's the most controversial part of their living card game model for sure, is that core set thing. But after that, I think it's pretty fun. Uh, we're almost two years into the game, and if you wanted to own every card that was out there right now, you'd be spending upwards of $350. Hmm. Uh, for everything, and I that, bought this collection. New. That's MSRP. I bought this collection used for about half price, uh, Pretty good. which is great for me. 150, 200 bucks. Yeah, somewhere in that, um, in that but, range. I mean, that's it's a lot, but I also bought enough to play for hours and hours sure, and hours. A lot of content. You know, each scenario is going to be a game night essentially. How many uh, characters are there? Um, there are five in the core set. And then five that get introduced in the expansion that starts off each campaign. Hmm. They have published three additional campaigns past the core set. So you get five from the core set, plus five, five, and five for these three other campaigns. Uh, so there's 20, but one of those came with an extra one. And you can also pick up Arkham Novellas. 
mm. uh, that Fantasy Flight puts out that gives you... Are those actual books? They're actual books. They're like little $15 oh, books that are like 100 nice. pages. And they also come with promo cards. Essentially, they come with characters that you can play that haven't been released yet. Hmm. Uh, so wow, they're really like stretching their marketing for this game. They are investing heavily in this IP, in this card game. Now, this is probably... I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Stretching if, games into, like, oh, you, want, if you want everything in this game, you ought to, also got to go get these books. It, yeah. Be sure it, to go check out the movie, and when you buy your ticket, they'll give you a promo card. And ooh, yeah, yes. In every box of Golden Grams, there's going to be new investigators. Right, right. Yeah, it's it feels like a slippery slope. It It is. Uh, but no one's forcing you to pay for it all. Of course. Yeah, right? yeah that's always the argument. Um, so, But if you're a fan of the game, you're going to want all this stuff. Yeah, and you're going to shell out for it. So you end up doing, like, kind of going towards avenues that maybe you wouldn't otherwise? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I don't, know. I, I, don't, I don't know about all that. It, it's, it's a different business model, and I'm it's a little bit questionable. Stuff. It's bold, but uh, it's also probably one of the best products that they have. It, it seems cool. So... But yeah, well, Graham, thanks for teaching me this game. Thanks for uh, bringing it by. Yeah. Uh, I will have to play some more yeah, at some dude. point. Finish, I'm finish excited. some games, maybe play through a whole campaign. How long does a game of this take, generally? Um, uh, I would say 45 minutes per player. Okay. Uh, that's my, been my experience. If you played it more, you could probably get it down to maybe 30 minutes per player. Sure. Which is pretty standard board game length. Yeah, it's about right. So. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>